all right hey everyone welcome back to another video of salesforce makes sense and we are currently on the third category of flow types we covered screen flows and we covered record triggered flows well now comes into the picture schedule triggered flows right so this is the third bit of our flow builder masterclass and what we have seen as of now is if we want user to provide any input we have to provide them screens is where we want to go with screen flows if we want to do any kind of actions in the background it could be related to the record that's triggering it or it could be related to the record or it could be something else be it synchronously or asynchronously we use record triggered flows we can even schedule them and that's where schedule triggered flows come now what is the difference between the schedule triggered flows that we'll be starting today we'll be understanding it with a use case and what is basically the one wherein you know we can schedule in the record triggered flows right I, I showed you some use cases where you can take an action maybe five days before a contract expiry or 15 days after a task is closed and so on and so forth right so that is relative date right that's that's date based on any one of the parameters that exists on the record but what if you wanted to do something like I want to check something on every 29th February right I want to check something 8 o'clock in the morning every day I want to run some specific script every 15th of every month would I be able to do that on record triggered flows we might not be able to right so similar to how we write batch apex and we schedule them to run at a specific date and time and we let it recur is similar to schedule triggered flows right that's where schedule triggered flows come in so i'll give you a use case example and that will make it a bit more clear so i just have one use case for this particular flow type because this is similar to record triggered flows it's just that it has a specific date and time start okay so let's say that i want to do this on every january 1st at 10 o'clock i want to retrieve all the tasks cases and email messages in the system okay that were created in the previous year right so if it is january 2024 i want to take a look at everything around task cases and emails that have been created in 2023 that have not been closed or completed right and i just want to get rid of all of them from the system so that you know i don't overwhelm my storage now do not debate me on the use case this is just to show you what how we can use schedule triggered flows okay so let's jump into salesforce and see how do we configure it so if i go to new flows now right now we are not going to choose screen flows we are not going to choose record triggered flows we are going to choose schedule triggered flows which says that it launches at a specific time and frequency for each record in a batch right and this is an auto launched flow right you don't have to have any triggers around it you don't have to place it in the canvas anywhere so what is with screen flow you have to place it somewhere for 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 user to start using it right what about the record trigger you have to have some action happening that triggers the flow right that helps launch it but what about schedule triggered it is auto launched right at a specific time and period it will automatically execute itself that is where schedule triggered flows come in okay so i'll just say create now the difference you'll see here is that you are able to set a schedule okay so the schedule is where you say that i want to do it on every first and i want to do it at a specific time see that's the kind of benefit you get with schedule triggered flows so what i'll say is i want to do it at 10 o'clock from 1st january right and what should be the frequency right it should be let's say once it can either be daily or it can either be weekly okay now in our case our start date is 1st january and we only want to do it once every year right so if i were to say that you know do it daily then it would run on first second third fourth and so on if i were to tell it that you know run it weekly it would run on the first and then seven days later and then 14 days later and so on okay but since i want to execute it once per year i'll simply say just execute it once on the first day of january 2024 right that's how i would set the schedule next i get to choose an object so what object would i choose i would choose the task object now if you notice here i have to choose a primary object okay so you might be thinking that you know himanshu we have to do task cases and probably email messages right so how, how do we do multiple you can fetch those records 
you just define one object here and then you can define you can get records inside the schedule triggered flow also okay so i want to fetch all the records here right and i want to say where the created date is less than i can put a date right so if i put today let's see what happens it does not recognize it if i say with a bracket it does not recognize it i'll simply say 31 12 2023 okay so it should be less than or equal to this particular date okay i'm just giving you a starting example you can very well choose to you know create a resource and all of that stuff you can do all of that now okay the only idea is to show you how a schedule triggered flow is different and how it would uh, how would it work okay so what i've said is i want to fetch all the tasks where created date is less than or equal to 31st december 2023 and created date is greater than or equal to 1 1 2023 so this is the entire year the past year okay so i'll simply say save here and this will be my scheduled flow cleanup okay so i'll just put it as is and i'll say save okay now what can i do here i have all the records right i have all the records here so I can simply say delete. Okay, so I'll say delete records and I'll say delete all tasks, right? And I'll say use the ID stored. So I'll just take whatever record has come here in this context will be deleted. Okay, so it could either be a record or a record collection. Now what Salesforce will do is it will fetch all the records and it will run it in batches. Okay, so you don't have to worry about the bulkification. Salesforce will take care of that. Okay, and it says that you need to make sure that each record has an ID. Since we are fetching the entire object, it will have an ID. So we don't have to worry about it because to delete a record, the ID is needed as the key. Right, so that's the first thing we did. What do we want to do along with it? Let's say we want to also delete cases. So I'll simply say get records. I'll say get cases. So I can do the same thing for cases as well. I, I hope you get the idea of what I'm trying to say, right? You might have to start with a single object here, but then you can also choose and work on what other objects that you want to do. Okay, and you have pretty much similar things that you have available here in terms of what you have on the record triggered flows. You have all the CRUD operations, create, update, delete, and get, and then you can also do things like an action, sending out emails, uh, posting to chatter, uh, uh, triggering an approval process, um, calling Apex classes, um, you can also call a subflow, right? So if you have another flow that you want to call, you can call a subflow similar to record triggered flows. You can do assignments, you can do decisions and everything here, right? You have some waiting, waiting option available in scheduled triggered flows. So this is a new feature that you get and you can choose to choose to wait until a specific period of time and then execute a certain action. Okay, this helps when you are working on some synchronous data and the flow executes. Maybe some, something takes a bit longer, right? And you want to continue or resume the flow after you are certain or you are sure that that particular value might have been updated and then you want to take an action, right? So that's where you can use these kind of things. What is wait for amount of time? You can just basically pause your flow for a certain period of time and then resume it. Okay, so I can choose, you see, I can choose how many days, hours, minutes or months I want to pause my flow for. And then once that duration is over, I will resume it. And when I say I will resume it, the system will resume it uh, automatically. Okay, and then let's say if I want it to be waiting for, let's say, five months, after five months, do I want it to be starting at a specific period? Yes, in that case, I'll mention the specific time as well. So you see that that's how capable flows are right so this is too too good to be true i mean like it's super powerful if, if you have the right use cases that you want to build and if you know how to use the system here it's it's really good okay you got the idea of uh, how would you uh, delete multiple objects in a single record triggered flow you can uh, in a single schedule triggered flow this is how you do okay i've just shown you one what about other actions just how i said you know wait for an amount of time if you want to wait for a specific date you can just mention the date right when do you want to resume the flow next right so your flow will start on 1st january at 10 o'clock it will get all the task records delete them and then it will wait until 17 january okay and then you can tell it that you know start at 1 a.m 
on 17 January and the 1 a.m. time should be basically let's say the Gulf Standard Time the GST time okay so start at 1 a.m. GST time on 17th after you have done this and then do this as well so what will happen is whatever you write here next whatever you do next right if you say get records so these records this action will happen only after this particular date has come it will resume only then until then what Salesforce will do is pause this particular flow and keep track of it until the time comes and execute it so that's the kind of load Salesforce is taking for us to you know ensure that automation works in place automation is powerful and it's all point and click and, and you don't have to write code right these kind of capabilities are not even available in Apex if, if you if you see right we don't have any capability to you know do anything like waiting until a certain period of time waiting until a certain date and time waiting until something happens you know when i say something happens you can even do things like decision right wait for conditions so this means that wait until something is set to true <clears throat> wait until this particular status has changed wait until this particular field has been modified all of that can also be done okay so those are the three waiting parameters that you get as part of your scheduled flows okay and the scheduled triggered flows automatically take care of the bulkification always remember that in case you are facing issues in terms of the bulkification maybe your data is uh, too huge and maybe the way we you have constructed your uh, crud related uh, actions it could be get records or delete records or whatever might not be completely optimized so you have to figure out a way to optimize them all right one important thing is like you know do not keep them inside the iterator or the loop that's true for uh, flows also right you have the iterator option available here right so if you see you have something called a loop right so don't don't try to get records inside a loop uh, inside a loop basically that might hit the governor limits very very quickly or otherwise uh, it takes care of the bulkification all right so that was about scheduled triggered flows i will not be able to show you the uh, show you this getting executed here uh, and it's pretty much similar to the record triggered flows but yeah if you want to give it a try just just try to put it at a date let's say tomorrow and let it run okay and then when you come back tomorrow you'll see that all the tasks have been deleted or all the cases have been deleted right and you need to put the status checks right which are currently not closed or completed so put that entry criteria on your records or else it will delete all the records in the system okay great that was all about scheduled triggered flows i hope you are completely clear with the three broad types of flows we talked about screen flows we talked about record triggered flows and we have talked about scheduled triggered flows and that brings us pretty much to the most important part of the curriculum is now over we'll now talk a bit about certain uh, other aspects we'll talk about something around flows but yeah good information to take and something that will help you debug things figure out things and know more about flows that's something that I'll be taking up in the next set of videos. All right. So I hope the tutorials are helping. If there's any specific use case that you want me to build that you want me want help with, feel free to write a comment or write back to me on LinkedIn or probably on, 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 on email and I'll, I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Yeah. So that was use case one from schedule triggered flows. I'll see you in the next video till then. Keep learning. Bye.